Soccer moms and football dads, this is Sports Time, and I'm Jack Cognetta. It's great to have you with us. Cliffside Park Boys Soccer's defense is out of this world. We'll have more on that later, but we begin with a thriller in Ridgefield Park. It's a game that RP head coach Tony Gonzalez is calling one of the greatest games he's ever coached. Rutherford, Ridgefield Park, the BCSL American Showdown. It's our Game of the Week. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Space Odyssey USA. Located in Englewood, New Jersey, Space Odyssey USA is the hottest family entertainment center around. And let's check out the highlights. Scarlet's looking for their first win of the season, but in the first quarter, Rutherford with other ideas. That's David Milne runs it in 21 yards for the score. It's 7-0 Bulldogs early. On their next possession, more from Rutherford. This time, Milne fires deep to LaRon Dillard. It's a 60-yard pass play. The Bulldogs with the ball in the red zone and threatening, and that would set up this. It's David Milne, the senior. He's going to punch it in from one yard out, and that's his second touchdown of the game. And just like that, it's 14-0 Bulldogs at the end of the first quarter. Wow. Second quarter, more from Rutherford. Milne again finds Dillard. This time it's 18 yards for the touchdown, and it's 21-0 Bulldogs at the half. The Scarlets outscored 55-0 through the first six quarters this season. That's until the third quarter. On the opening kickoff, Ryan Melly is going to bobble it, but then picks it up, and folks, they're not going to get him. He's gone. This is 92 yards, a career high for Melly as he takes it all the way. And a 21-0 score is now 21-6. The Scarlets missed the extra point, but what a run by Ryan Melly. Watch it again here on replay. And watch as Melly is going to get some good protection from his blockers. Watch the triangle that the Scarlets create right there, and that allows Melly to go 92 yards for the score. It's now 21-6. Later in the third, Rutherford driving in the red zone. They're on fourth down, and watch David Capone as he takes down Milne for the sack, and the Rutherford turns over the ball on downs. That gives RP the advantage, and they would take advantage. The fullback, Mark Aspinwall, 30 yards to the post, and it's first and goal for the Scarlets as they have a chance to come back in this one. Two plays later, Matt McCaro is going to punch it in from one yard out right here. And just like that, a 21-0 lead is now 21-12. So here we go, fourth quarter. The Scarlets driving again. Matty McCaro this time is going to find Kevin Albert. 12 yards for the score in the back of the end zone. Extra point, no good again. But hold on, folks, it's now 21-18. Do you smell what I'm cooking? I think you do. Scarlet's next possession, 21-18, two minutes to go. McCarrow passes to Kevin Albert, who takes it 50 yards and inside the red zone. And hold on to your hats. We have ourselves a ball game with less than a minute to play. Later in the drive, the Scarlets facing third down. 19 seconds to go. McCarrow's pass is out of the reach of Ryan Melly, but hold the phone. Pass interference called on LaRon Dillard, so the Scarlets get another chance. McCaro looking, plenty of time. He's going to look to his right. It's a wide open Kevin Albert as time expires. Ball game. The Scarlets come back and score 24 unanswered points, and they go on to win this one 24 21, the final. Matt McCaro passed for 209 yards and two scores for the Scarlets, and what a win for Richfield Park. As in what Tony Gonzalez is calling one of the greatest games he's ever coached. A tremendous win for Richfield Park as they knock off Rutherford 24-21. And it really is a tale of two halves. In the first six quarters of play for the Scarlets this season, they allowed 55 points and scored none. But in the last two quarters, as you just saw in our highlight, the Scarlets outscored Rutherford 24-0. A tremendous win for the Richfield Park Scarlets. Tenafly taking on Fort Lee. The Tigers looking to go 2-0 to start the season. First quarter, no score. Tenafly driving with the ball at the 40. Chris Yearwood fumbles to Fadzwa Mashandu. Say that three times fast. Recovers the fumble. But Fort Lee would go three and out. And they can't score. It's still a scoreless game. Later in the first, still no score. Tigers with the ball at the Fort Lee 10. And that's John Sobo. Takes it in 10 yards out. And just like that, it's 7-0 t 
Antenna Fly. Fort Lee would look to answer on their next possession. Brian Ree at quarterback for the Bridgemen. He's going to fire one downfield, but Joan Kim is popped by Sobo. The ball pops out incomplete. Bridgemen forced to punt again, and it's still 7-0 Tigers. And then Tenafly Fly pours it on. That's Ben Edlin, 20 yards for the score. It's 14-0 Tigers after one quarter of play. Tenafly Fly off to an impressive start last season. Same kind of thing this season. Second quarter, more from the Tigers. New quarterback in the game. His name is Ryan Labatkin. And Labatkin in the second is going to throw a 27-yard touchdown strike to John Sobo, who's wide open. And it's 21-0 Tenafly at the half. We now move to the third quarter. Bridgemen with a few bright spots on the day. Nobody does it like Brian Ree. The quarterback, Brian Ree, is going to roll out. Plenty of time, and he finds Eric Park downfield. It's a 50-yard pass play, and that brings the Bridgemen into the red zone. Park bobbles the ball, but somehow holds on to it. So Fort Lee driving. Next play, Ree is going to roll out again. Again gets good protection, and this time he's going to find John Horacek in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown, but too little too late as Tenafly goes on to this one to win this one, pardon, by a final score of 34 to, 4, 34 to 13. So Tenafly improves to 2 and 0 on the season, very similar to how they started off the 2008 campaign. For Fort Lee, a disappointing start to 2009 as they start out at 0-2. And, and if we take a look at Fort Lee's upcoming schedule, they do have some winnable games on the upcoming schedule. Pardon. This Friday night on the 25th, they travel to Dumont. Then on the 2nd, they play arch rival Dwight Morrow. And on the 10th, they play at Cliffside Park, a team that they beat last year. So we'll look out for the Fort Lee Bridgeman. Still much more to come here on Sports Time. Corey Doviak of NorthJerseySports.com joins us in a little bit as we take a look at Cliffside Park Boys Soccer. We'll tell you why they're one of the stingiest teams in the BCSL American. Also, Englewood, the Maroon Raiders, looking for their first win of the season in football. Highlights coming up, but first, let's check out some scores from around the area. We'll be right back on Sports Time. Hey, New Jersey. Time Warner Cable brings you family and community programming on demand. New Jersey On Demand, Channel 1111. The people you know, the places you know. It's all about New Jersey, all the time. Watch anytime with the power to pause, fast forward, and rewind. And it's yours at no additional cost. Check it out. Tune to Channel 1111 for New Jersey On Demand. Bergen County Schools are a recipe for success. Graduation rates are the highest in the nation, increasing an incredible 15% over the last five years. We're first in the nation for students taking advanced placement courses who score higher than those in private school. They rank in the top five for math and reading nationwide. Combining quality educators, support staff, parents, and community. That's the recipe for success that will continue in Bergen County with your support. Bergen County Public Schools work because the Bergen County Education Association works with you. 